We all grew up hearing about the American dream, right? You know, work hard, buy a house, watch its value soar, and build a nest egg. It sounds perfect, doesn't it? But here's the thing, for millions of Americans, the American dream is a lie. If you asked 100 people what the housing crisis is, you'd get 100 different answers. But almost everyone would agree on one thing, there is a housing crisis. And it's not just about high rent, it's about people feeling squeezed, drowning in debt, and not able to live where or how they want. So let's rewind a bit. Before the Great Depression, buying a home meant putting down a whopping 50% up front. Loans were short term too, like four to six years, with huge balloon payments at the end. When the depression hit and many prices dropped, many people who could afford monthly payments couldn't cover those balloon payments, which led to massive foreclosures. In fact, during the Great Depression, nearly one million people lost their homes to foreclosure. So the federal government stepped in, creating longer term loans and a secondary market for mortgages. Banks could sell loans to this market, rinse and repeat. This helped stabilize the housing market and in many ways save the economy. And then after World War II, America had this incredible economic boom. We used the same tools from the depression to make housing prices go up, creating a thriving middle class. Cities grew, jobs were plentiful, and owning a home became the norm. By 1960, 62% of Americans owned their own homes, compared to just 44% in 1940. Fast forward to the early 2000s and we saw this massive housing bubble. And when it burst in 2008, the term housing recovery became popular. But think about it, how do you recover to a bubble? How do you restore something that wasn't sustainable in the first place? By 2010, nearly 4 million homes had been foreclosed, affecting about 10 million people. During this time, millennials were coming of age, ready to buy homes. But home builders, burnt by the financial crisis, had slowed down. Banks and large investment firms were buying up properties, creating an artificial scarcity and driving up prices. In fact, in 2018, institutional investors purchased around 11% of starter homes in the US. This has left many feeling trapped. Housing is insanely expensive and hard to find. Our cities are no longer dynamic. They're not ever-growing places that evolve with change. Instead, they're locked down by zoning laws that prevent new housing from being built. And then there's the NIMBY, the not-in-my-backyard mentality. While it's easy to paint them as villains, the reality is more complex. People resist new housing because it means more traffic, bigger class sizes in school, and changes that they're uncomfortable with. I mean, many people struggle with change. But here's the good news. Things are starting to change. Cities are beginning to relax these rules, allowing more types of housing to be built. For example, in 2019, Oregon became the first state to eliminate single-family zoning statewide, allowing for more diverse types of housing. So one thing is true, we cannot rely on big corporations or top-down solutions. It's about empowering local developers, banks, and communities to create affordable housing. In Minneapolis, they eliminated single-family zoning in 2020, aiming to build more duplexes and triplexes. The thought here is that if we let our cities breathe and grow, if we allow everyone to participate in creating housing, we can break out of this crisis. The planning in these cities shouldn't be for permanence but embracing change and innovation as the times come. Imagine if we could turn those 10 million foreclosed homes from 2008 crisis into affordable housing today. So what do you think? Can we reshape the American dream? Let's talk about it in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.